Hello and welcome to another screencast about finding the area between two curves. Alright, so today we're going to look at the area of the finite region bounded by x equals the quantity of y minus 2 squared and x plus y squared equals 10. Now I've already used GeoGebra to graph these two functions and that's only because my drawings would not look nearly this accurate. Um, so we got to figure out which one is which. Um, so looking here at the red one, you notice that it intersects our x-axis at 10. So with these two functions, if we were to plug in y equals 0, it should give us an x value of 10. Okay, so this one here has obviously got to give us the red one. Then the black one here, kind of playing the same game, but in this case, if we plug in x equals 0, it's going to give us a y value of 2. Right, so that one makes sense here for the black one. Okay, so now that we've got those, we know that we're going to need to figure out the area between these two curves, and we've got an intersection point here, and we've got an intersection point here, and we're going to be going between these two intersection points. So then the area that I want to shade, let me grab my highlighter here, is going to be all of this stuff in here and pretend like I'm actually hitting both curves the whole way. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be the area then that I want to figure out. So we need to figure out our endpoints or where we are intersecting at. Um, and again, because I've graphed this so nicely, I could do it graphically, but I would like to make sure you guys get, can see how the algebra works out as well. Okay, so we want to set these two functions equal to each other and you notice that the function here is already solved for x, okay? And trying to get the y by itself on this one, mm, that's not going to be very pretty. Okay, so I'm looking at my second function over here then, and I want to go ahead and solve for x on that one. So let's swing that y squared over. So x is going to be equal to negative y squared plus 10. So now I can go ahead and set those two functions equal to each other. So I have y minus 2 squared, is negative y squared plus 10. Let's go ahead and multiply this out. So I'm going to get y squared minus 4y plus 4, because remember y minus 2 quantity squared means y minus 2 times y minus 2. Okay, and then I brought down my other side. Um, let's go ahead and set this equal to 0. So let me bring these two pieces over to the other side. So I'm going to have 2y squared minus 4y, and then I've got a positive 4, but I'm going to be subtracting a 10, so that's going to give me a minus 6 equals 0. And then I notice that all three of my terms have a 2 in common, so let me go ahead and factor that out. And then now I've got a polynomial left that I can go ahead and factor, so that's going to factor into y minus 3 and y plus 1. And then now I can set each factor equal to 0, and I get my two intersection points, this time in terms of y. Okay. Last video that we did, I solved and we got our intersection points in terms of x. Okay. But if you have x, you can always find y or vice versa, so that part doesn't really matter. But it just turns out that the way this function is set up, having this y inside of these parentheses, in, even over here having that y squared, it's going to be um, not very pretty to solve for, and we're going to end up with pluses and minuses, and that's just not nice. Okay, so we got our intersection points done. We know what our region looks like. So now we have to figure out, all right, what kind of a slice is going to make sense here? So I'm going to start with vertical. So if I were to make a vertical slice, that means it's going to go up and down. You know, if I were to make it here in the middle, I'd have my top function, or the top part of my slice would hit my top function, and the bottom part would hit my bottom function. But you notice over here all the way to the left, if I were to make a slice right here, my top function hits this black function, and my bottom, the bot, or sorry, the top part of my slice hits the this function, and the bottom part hits the same function, okay? That's not good. So I probably do not want to do vertical slices. Let me go ahead and erase that. Okay, let's look at horizontal slices though. So no matter where I'm at, so if I'm up here at the top, if I'm in here in the middle, or if I'm down here at the bottom, hopefully you guys can see that no matter where I make my slices, the one side of the slice is going to hit one function, the other slice is going to hit the other function. 
Okay, so let me go ahead and draw in one of those. Oh boy, this is going to be a long slice. Okay, so pretend like there is my slice. Ooh, and it got a little skinny. <laughs> okay, so here's my slice. Kind of looks like a snake. <laughs> All right, so I need to figure out what the width of that slice is and what the height of that slice is. Um, so the height, you'll notice, kind of goes back here to my y-axis. So that means the height of my slice is going to be delta y. Okay, now how do I find the width of my slice? Well, if you look in your book or if you watch the um, quick recap, you notice that you always need to do your bigger function minus your smaller function. Okay, or in this case, you know, when we did the vertical slices, it was top minus bottom. In this case, it actually needs to be the right function minus the left function. Okay, so a little bit uglier, but hey, it can be done. So the width of my slice then is going to be, um, let's see, this y squared, oops, negative y squared plus 10, and then minus my other function, which is going to be y minus 2 quantity squared. So again, this is my right slice minus my, or my right function minus my left function is another way you can think about that. Okay, fantastic. This one's a little bit uglier than the last one, but yeah, that's okay. What can we do? All right, let's go ahead and set up our integral. So I've got the integral from my bottom end point, which in this case is negative 1, to my top end point, which is 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my slice. So that's going to be, let's see, we have negative y squared plus 10 minus y minus 2 squared dy. Okay, this is a big mess, but it's just going to be a polynomial. Okay, that's not hard to do. So we got to multiply this piece out again, distribute our negative, or if you want to, let's see, if we bring down this function, we're actually going to have to make it negative, but that's okay. So let me go ahead and do some multiplying out here of things. Or, you know, this may be where your professor just says, oh, that's good enough. I just want you to know how to set it up. But just in case um, that's not the case, let's go ahead and figure out what this is then. So we have y squared minus 4y plus 4 dy. And then so that's going to give us, sorry about kind of the messiness here. We have negative 1 to 3. We're going to end up with negative 2y squared plus 4y minus 6. Let me go ahead and do that. And again, that's dy. This is a polynomial, so it should be fairly straightforward to integrate. So we're going to end up with negative 2 thirds y cubed plus 2y squared minus 6y. And again, you can always go through and take the derivative to check it just to make sure you've got the right function in there. I'd hate to do all this work and then have the wrong function. Okay, let's throw in 3, throw in negative 1. And when we throw in that negative 1, you definitely want to make sure to have parentheses in there. So we've got negative 2 thirds 3 cubed plus 2 times 3 squared minus 6 times oopsie, times 3. That whole, whatever that number is, minus negative 2 thirds times a negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1. That's a number. And then when you combine these two numbers together, hopefully my math is correct here, you end up with 64 over 3. Fabulous. Thank you for watching.